Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of WholesinglersFlyShop.com. Uh, today I'm bringing you a cool fly. It's a stone fly imitation. It's called Stimulator. It's a classic fly and uh, it's a lot of fun to tie. Uh, I'm gonna admit I do not fish it here. We don't have, we have a stone fly hatch. We have a lot of stone flies but they don't really all come off at the same time and it's not something that trout key on so it's not something that I really fish in my area but if you're out west or you're taking a trip out west or something like that it's a great thing or it also works as like a grasshopper imitation if you tie it in green or something you could fish it up along the weed you know up along the grass banks and stuff and do real well with it as a grasshopper imitation so change your colors on it and uh, do it but I'm going to tie it here to imitate a stone fly and um, I hope you enjoy this guys it's a lot of fun to tie it does take some skill and um, but it's easily accomplished if you just take your time and practice it you know you'll pick it up and it's a it's a cool fly it's one of those flies that once you get into fly tying and you learn the different techniques it, it's one that you like to show off so if you can tie it well you like to show it off so here you see the stimulator a picture of it and uh, the material list to tie it Alright everybody, here you see the fly in the vise, really, really cool looking fly. Let's get into tying it. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our hook in the vise for a hook. I'm using a fire hole 718 in a size 10. And um, fire hole is a great hook for this, That the 718 I should say, that nice curved hook. And um, next thing we're going to do is put some thread on. This is 140 denier yellow thread. And we're going to start it about two-thirds of the way, okay? And that's going to be our point that we're going to work from here. So I want to go, if this is my whole hook, I want to go about two-thirds of the way up to where I started at, okay? And uh, we're just going to trim that thread off, and then I'm going to wind it back, clear back to the very start of the bend, right about there. And I'm just going to put a little bit of thread on here. And we're going to end back there. Now, next thing I'm going to use is a piece of elk hair. And uh, this is bull elk, uh, nice yellow color here at the tips. And I'm going to pull out a chunk of it, and it's going to be about half a width of a pencil. Okay? I don't know how else to describe it, but I don't want it too thick. Okay, and we're just going to trim them off right down at the base. Now, next thing I'm going to do, I got this Stonfo tool. It's a really cool tool. It has a comb on one end, and then on the other end, it has the Velcro. I like using this for this purpose, and I'll just take that comb, and it pulls that fluff right out of there. There is, like, none of that under hair in there. It comes right out. So, I really like my Stonfo tool for that. Next thing, we're going to stack all these hairs with our hair stacker and just going to put it in the tube there, pop them down in there, make a couple smacks on your hand or on the table. And when you do that, they will all line up here. I can get them just a little bit tighter than that. There you go. There, now you can see the tips are all lined up. So, we're just going to pinch those tips and pull them out. And then, keeping the tips all in the line like that, I'm going to... You can see there's a change in hair color there. That's where I'm going to tie it down at. So I'm going to hold it right over top of where I stopped my thread there, right at that change of hair color. And I'm going to wrap it down. And I'm going to start out with a couple softer wraps. And then, tighten it up. Okay, now I'm going to take, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to take my hair and I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to wind it up to that point that I said about earlier, okay? I'm right above it now. 
So we're just going to make a couple wraps here, loose ones for right now, and then make them in, pull all of this hair up, and cut it off. And then we're going to clean that up a little bit. Next thing I want to put on is I'm going to put on some brassy or some salt, small sized hot orange wire. And I'm going to cut a fairly big chunk off of this, a couple inch chunk. So it's easier to work with. And then I'm going to tie it down. Alright, I'm going to tie it. Oops, pulled it out there. I'm going to tie it clear back to the start of the tail. Okay, now I'm going to just cover up all this and smooth it out. Okay, there you see now I got this all smoothed out. It's nice and smooth there. You could have done that with dubbing, but it's just as easy to do it with thread. And I'm going to just tease these a little bit as I go sometimes. Trying to get them straight back and not so blown out looking. So anyhow, on that, the next thing I'm going to use, I have a dark bar ginger saddle that I love to use. I love it. I use it for just about everything. But it's also, it's a variant. There's some brown ones in there and then there's some nice bar ginger ones. And I'm going to actually use both of them. You could use Grizzly for what I'm using this one right here now. But uh, if you have Grizzly, but I'm going to use dark bar ginger. And I'm going to tie it in by the butt end, right there where we stopped our thread. Okay, this piece here, I'm using the dark bar ginger. And I'm just going to wrap this back, and I'm going to space it out. And what I'm doing is I'm creating the rib on this fly. You can use a cape or a saddle, it doesn't matter. I'm creating the rib and kind of like gills on the side, I guess you'd almost say. Legs looking. But it's going to help it float. This thing floats really well. So we're just going to wrap that back. I'm going to get it the whole way back to the tail. I'm going to hold it up in the air. I'm going to take my orange wire. I'm going to make a nice tight wrap there to hold that in place. Okay, then I'm going to take and I'm going to just wiggle this up through. And by wiggling it, it kind of separates the fibers and helps it not trap as much. So we're just going to wiggle that the whole way around, the whole way up the body here. And you're going to trap fibers. That's just how it goes. And once we get up here to the end, I'm going to tie it off. And then we can helicopter this piece off and trim our hackle off at the back. Okay, so you see we have our back end of the fly. Now it's time to put the wing on. For the wing, I'm going to go back to my elk hair and we're going to make a wing. And I'm going to take about the same amount, about half a pencil size, trim it off again. Okay. And again, I'm going to grab it by the tips, and then I'm going to take that brush, and I'll just stick that brush in there, and you can see it pulls it all right out. That's such a nice way to do it very quickly. And then we're going to put it in our hair stacker again. And we're going to pack all them fibers down so they all line up evenly. There you see they all lined up evenly again and now we're going to make our wing. For the wing I could take and I could trim these top ones back a little bit but they're already laying down pretty good. Now you can also see that this has almost a little bit of a natural curve. So I'm going to make sure that natural curve bends back with it. And I'm just going to pinch all these fibers and I'm going to pinch it down on top. Now look where I have my wing here. It's just right above the tail, barely halfway, maybe a quarter of the way back that tail. And I'm just going to pinch it on top. I'm going to make a couple soft wraps. And then I'm just going to keep tightening it down and go back as I go. 
and I'm going to try to keep this on the top as best as I can when I tie, especially the front end, I mean the back end you definitely want it to stay on top okay now you see how it all balled up in the front that's fine gives you something to grab onto now we're going to come in and we're going to cut this off at a nice sharp angle there and then we're just going to wrap all that down and cover it up okay now time to make the head on this fly. It's looking good, real good so far. So for making the head, I'm just gonna keep wrapping this back just a hair, right about there. And remember I said this was a variant saddle that I had. So I'm gonna take one of the brown ones on there and I'm gonna take the brown feather and I'm gonna tie it in by the tip end or by the butt end I should say. And I'm going to tie it on the side of this. And then I'm going to put some dubbing on here. For dubbing, I'm using Crayfish Orange SLF Dub. And we're just going to dub some on our thread. And then what I do is I kind of start up at the eye. Make sure I have it thin up there where I start. And I'm just going to wrap it back. And I'm going to make a couple wraps just to kind of make sure that stays down. And then I bring it back forward and end it right there at the eye. I need to cover that up just a little better. Yeah, it ran just a hair short there. Okay, I like that better. And then I'm going to take my brown hackle and I want this to lay so the back side of the hackle goes to the back of the fly. And I'm just going to wrap this pretty tight, as tight as I can, but still being able to see that orange showing through. And this is going to make the head on the fly, the head and the legs of the fly, the stone fly imitation and then we tie it off right behind the eye okay cut that off and then I'm going to do a whip finish and we're done so this will make a great um, stone fly adult you know, salmon fly, whatever you want to fish it. If you're fishing out west, your dry dropper, this will be a good one for you. This thing floats really well. And there you go. That's all that's to it. Really cool, fancy looking fly, and it floats well. So, have fun, guys. Okay, guys, the fly there... It's a great looking pattern. It's a really cool, really fun to tie. It's just, you know, even if you don't fish it, it's good to tie it just for the practice of using the different techniques that's involved in tying it. So uh, have fun, experiment with it, you know, put one in a shadow box. Once you do a couple of them, get real good at it, pick your best one up, put it in a little shadow box and, you know, hang it up, hang it up on the wall above your fly bench or something like that. That's what I like to do with them. I like to get fancy with them. Um, I'll use floss for the abdomen on them. Uh, and like sometimes I'll tie them in purple just because they look cool. Here you see one that I tied in purple to share on Instagram. Uh, you know, they're fun to tie. And floss is used a lot, a lot of times on the abdomen if you have some. If you don't, use your thread. Use dubbing to change the color, whatever color you want to make it. And... Uh, just have fun. You don't have. You're not probably if you're an East Coast guy here like me. It might not. You might not ever fish it. But it's good to know the techniques involved in tying it. So, anyhow, any of the material you need to tie it, as always, you can find at wholesingersflyshop.com or by clicking in the links down below. If you really like this video, please give me a thumbs up and uh, share it. 
comment, whatever, you know. Um, I post them on my Facebook page and Instagram. You can head over to Facebook and like us on Facebook at WholesingerSlyShop.com and our Bugs and Beards group. And um, listen to our podcast, Bugs and Beard Podcast. So we have a lot of fun bringing that to you too. Until next week, guys, when I bring you another fly, I'm Sean Holsinger.